ಸಂಸಾರಸಾರೋಗವಿಸಂಸಾರಧೀಸಂಧೀರಕಂಸುನ್ನತನೂಪಲಾಸಂ ಸಂಲಾಪದೇಶಿಂಗ್ಫನಮೇಸಂತಕ್ರಾಗಂತು ದೇವತಮ್ಮನಿರಾಜಸ್ಸುನು ಸಗಮುಖದ ದಮ್ಮಸವನ ಕಾಲೋ ಅಯಂ ವದಂತ ದಮ್ಮಸವನ ಕಾಲೋ ಅಯಂ ವದಂತ ದಮ್ಮಸವನ ಕಾಲೋ ಅಯಂ ವದಂತ ಮನೋಪುಂಭಂಗಮಾ ಮನೋಷ್ಟ ಮನೋಮಯ ಮನಸಾಚೆ ಪದುಂಟೇನ ಭಾಸತಿ ಕರೋತಿ ವಾತೋನ ದುಃಖಮನ್ವೇತಿ ಚಕ್ಕನ್ವಹತೋ ಪದ ನಮೋ ತಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುಂದಸ ನಮೋ ತಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುಂದಸ ನಮೋ ತಗವತೋ ಅರ್ಹತೋ ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಬುಂದಸ ಉಮೇಶ್ ಟು ದ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪರ್ಟೆಡ್ ವನ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ದಿ ವನ್ ದ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ವನ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಧಮ್ಮ and all of you are warmly welcome today uh, i am going to explain you a very special topic in buddhism that is mind before i am going to explain this topic i would like to explain you some kind of uh, being realms okay you know according to buddhism uh all buddhist teachings focus on how we improve our mind mind is the very important thing whether we happy or not our happiness depends on how far we are purifying our mind then but you know we mostly give the priority to other things for our education for our relatives for our friends for our physical body but we don't we mostly don't give the priority for our mind according to buddhism uh, there is one of the you know meditation technique that uh, the contemplation of mind that is also one of the meditation technique that uh, if we can understand our mind we always try to purify our mind from negative feelings such as anger big attachment jealousy delusion those are the emotions negative feelings which disturb our peace of mind you know although we are very rich although we are well educated if our mind is anger angry then our achievements our education our money our properties everything is useless therefore keeping our mind with pure as much as we can that is one of the purposes that we should do you know um, first of all because i decided to explain the some relevance therefore in last week you know we had a discussion and uh, actually i knew that uh, i uh, i thought that uh, you would know a lot of things about the relevance that is why i didn't discuss i'm sorry now i am going to explain as short about the relevance 
being realms who are in this universe according to buddhism you know we are here and yeah? we are human human beings this is the human realm it is visible everybody can see the human world there are other uh, four realms um, as you know hell you know the hell one of them is can be seen animal realm animals are with us therefore we can see them but there are other three realms in the hell realm uh, one of them is animal and there are other three realms according to buddhism there are special names niraya teta asura and this animal realm there are other names in pali language but one of them is animal you know at the very beginning some things when we teach when we learn buddhism some of them can be understood in faith in first but little by little when we go forward we can experience we can see uh, how much they are true therefore you know when we go to the school when we are going to study something first of all we believe something in faith you know a lot of things in our life we believe in faith for example your birthday can you remember your birthday no we can remember our birthday we we believe our birthday in faith uh, how do you know your parents have you done some experiment dna experiments about your parents no we we believe our parents in faith actually a lot of things in our life we believe in faith when you go to a doctor take some medicine you never check his uh, certificate or something you believe that he is a certified doctor that is how you go there when you go to a classroom to study you believe that the classroom or the teachers are teachers have some kind of qualification than you have that is why you are in the classroom actually a lot of things in our life we believe in faith faith when we study buddhism at the very beginning we have no complete understanding comprehension therefore we understand some things in our faith listening something what buddha said in his teachings but later little by little we go forward we should not have faith because we can experience but however at the very beginning we should have some knowledge in faith here also we have to believe something okay there are four hell realms in this universe so one of them is you know can be seen animal realm dogs cats and fish they are included into animal realm here this is the human realm we can see it when we go up a level there are other six seven realm eh yeah. this and there are six heavenly realm one by one it goes up there when they goes up you know they have more facilities they don't need earn money or do study because of their karmic energy that they have prepared in their previous life as soon as they they are appear in this realm they have all facilities as soon as they think something that i want this thing this those things are appeared around them according to their spiritual level that is the nature of uh, six uh, heavenly realm according to buddhism and also in this level you know this is the center this is the middle human realm buddha appear in this human realm you know other realms you know can hell realm beings can get the result benefits from this message these human beings can are beneficial uh, from this message and also some kind of upper realms beings too there are six heavenly realms 
again there are 16 material realms in buddhist language in pali it says rupavachara brahma loka rupa means material they have physical body but it is very uh, soft very soft they in this level the heaven realm be- beings they need food and their facilities but they don't need earn them according to their uh, spiritual energy that they have accumulated in their previous lives as soon as they think whatever they want these those things appear in the around them but in this level they don't need any physical thing they don't need food or drinks anything because of their psychic energy they can live uh, with their psychic energy their psychic energy is the food for their lives there are 16 other material realms in the upper level there are other four immaterial realms they have no physical body they have only mind but in this mental cognition we can believe it but you know when uh, for example water as a liquid water need a bottle or cup or glass as a liquid you know that liquid when you keep this bottle to defreeze then it is ice it's a material thing you don't need cup or bottle then when you boil this water what happens to it then it is invisible it it doesn't need anything it is invisible the one thing that is water in one level it should have a bottle in the other level it is like a material thing in the other side you know when we boil it it is like a gas our body also like that in this level we should need a physical body when we go to this level it is more soft and in this level it is more soft in this level it doesn't need a physical body only mental condition it cannot be believed in this mental condition that we have now but when we generate our positive energy we can understand there are some realms here how many realms in this universe count all of them 4 1 6 16 4 there are 31 realms in this universe not whole universe according to buddhism this is only one solar system you know in our galaxy according to buddhism in one galaxy you know we are living in the milky way have you heard about it milky way we are living in the milky way and there are millions of suns there are millions of suns in this um milky way among them there are 1000 1000 suns which has human realms with human realms other 1000 uh, realms you know there are there is a one sun which is a uh, human being other being like this there are thousand one thousand solar system which has these kind of beings in one galaxy according to buddhism when these things plus uh, you know uh, thousand times hmm, when it count it says you know here there are one thousand 1000 solar system which like this beings and also again it count with 1000 
Thaimsen. And it says Buddhism as, uh, actually this is the Chula Nikhaloka Dhatu. This is the uh, very short uh, world, universe. And again, this is Majjima Middle, Middle Universe. And again, it counts 1000 times. This is um, Mahaloka Dhatu, it is a big universe system. You know, this is the place, this is the place in one Buddha, only one Buddha appears once in this system. There are no both Buddhas appear in the same period in this system. But it doesn't sound that the universe is limit. Universe is unlimited. Again and again we can count it. Now you know scientists also are going to mighty universes, not only one universe. Buddhism has explained in this level, you know, beings who are in this system, they can get benefits from, from a Buddha's message. We are so beneficial. You know, a Buddha appears for a long time in this system. There are a lot of period, lot of years, billions of years where when a Buddha is not appear this system. Now this period we are so lucky. And uh, this is a short introduction about the universe, what Buddha has explained. Actually, there are a lot of information about the universe that Buddhism has explained. Little by little, we are going to explain as uh, we are free. Okay, now, although the universe is unlimited, Buddha said very clearly, you can never go to the end of the universe on your foot, feet, in your feet. But if you develop your mind, if you realize your mind, if you cultivate your mind, you can see all universe living in the same place. It doesn't need to go everywhere. On the other hand, you know, Buddha has gone other planets to preach his uh, doctrines, his message to other beings. However, although there are, we are living in a very uh, huge universe, we have a great duty as human beings. We were born in this world to that duty. What is that? We have to develop our mind into the maximum level. That should be our duty. That is why we were born in this world. Not only getting a high education and having a wife and taking care of our children. No, that is not only our duty. That also we can do, but that is not the main duty, main purpose of our life. Our main purpose should be developing our mind in the, into the maximum level. How, you know, according to Buddhism, the main purpose of our life is getting rid of suffering. Why we suffer? The main reason why we suffer is delusion or ignorance. What is the delusion that Buddha explained? When you think something as your previous experience, as your past experience, if your mind goes to past and if your mind lives in the past, that is the ignorance. For example, when you see a person who has blamed you, as soon as you see that person, what happens to your mind? Sometimes you may get angry. When there is a very beautiful person uh, whom that you have seen before, as soon as you see that person, as, you, as soon as you remember that person, your mind is with lust or craving. What is the reason of this big attachment or anger? After experience, after experience, we think it is 
happen in it is still it is happen in in this world when you see a person who has blamed you as soon as you look at that person you go to the previous experience when that person blamed you but maybe now that person doesn't remember that incident but it's still you are thinking you are living in the past it doesn't sound buddhism tells you to forget it we should not forget but as soon as we remember that incident we should be clever to understand now i don't go to the, that experience now i read only my mind if we have this awareness if we have this mindfulness we can remember anything without anger without craving without big attachment without lust therefore buddhism has explained how we get rid of suffering buddha said although there are a lot of teachings in buddhism we have to do only two what are they mindfulness and wisdom mindfulness means try to train our mind live in the present moment by practicing some kind of meditation technique such as breathing meditation loving kindness meditation there are a lot of meditation techniques in buddhism when we use these techniques we try to train our mind live to in the present moment we mostly live in the past or future that is the nature of our mind actually if our mind in past or future we have no experience about the beauty of our life we have lost our beauty if we have forget our mindfulness therefore be sure mindfulness is the best friend if we lose mindfulness be sure that we have lost our best friend if we can live with mindfulness it means we are always with our best friend by practicing meditation especially buddhism has both of meditation techniques one of them is concentration meditation or tranquility meditation the other thing is insight meditation by practicing concentration meditation we train our mind to keep it in the present moment whatever we do we do consciously we do everything with mindfulness that is the main purpose of primary level meditation in buddhism again and again we can train our mind to live in the present moment it is so beneficial to get rid of suffering on the other hand with concentrated mind we try to see the world reality what is the world reality according to buddhism there are both world realities one of them is karmic law have you heard about karmic law karmic law means whatever we do with mind consciously we will have the same results if we do something with wicked mind we will have the bad results negative results in this life or hereafter especially in this life if we do something with anger desire or delusion we will have the negative results lamentation those are the things that we will have suffering comes to our life on the other hand if we do something with pure mind with generosity compassion loving kindness wisdom if we do something with this good energy good feeling emotions it means we will have the fruitful results in this life or hereafter for example now when you listening to these doctrines your mind has no anger no jealousy very pure the results is invisible not here after the special thing that buddhism says if we can practice these things the results is visible the results are in this life 
not hereafter. The liberation or enlightenment <coughs> is not hereafter. You know other religions, they explain their purification, their enlightenment, their liberation, going to heaven realm hereafter. But the interesting thing in Buddhism is that the result is in this life. You know, when we practice our mind, being as a human being, you know, we can see the higher realms, like heavenly realm, material realm, we can see and we can experience as a human being, not only hereafter. You know, Buddha also has gone to other plans, other realms to preach his message by using some kind of psychic energy. As much as our wisdom, our energy, our courage, we also can develop our mind. That is the interesting thing that we should do as a human being. You know, in this period, in this world, we are born, we were born to to this thing. This, uh, we are so lucky, we are so fortunate to listen to this message that we can do something to improve our mind. Actually, we have enough courage, we have enough energy to do it. If we are intelligent, if we are ready to dedicate our life to do it, not only earning money, not only uh, studying something, actually we have to do those things too, to live in this world. But not only earning money or studying that we have another duty that we were born in this world to develop our mind to the maximum level. Buddha said, mind is the forerunner. That everything that we do, mind is forerunner. Mind is before. If our mind is pure, the activities, the world, behavior is correct. The result, you know, if we do something with pure mind, good results will come to us. Not only hereafter, in this short life itself. On the other hand, if we do something with wicked mind, we will have the bad results. If you blame somebody, he also blame or hit you. Again, that is not only hereafter, it is invisible. Those are the things, those are the results, whatever we do. When you laugh with other, other person, he also laugh with you. If you help other people, they also will help you again. Not only hereafter, this life. This is the nature of the karmic law. Therefore, on the other hand, according to Buddhism, there are three meritorious deeds that we do with pure mind. Generosity, moral conduct, and meditation. Generosity means that we offer, we donate something to others uh, who are uh, need in something. As much as if we can offer something to others, homeless people or some uh, patient or somebody uh, who are need, we can offer, we can give something that is one of the merits that we can practice to decorate our mind. Buddha said, practicing merit means decorating your mind. When we practice generosity, our mind is decorated. On the other hand, moral conduct or virtue, if we have good discipline in our speech and behavior, it is so beneficial in this society. Not only hereafter. You are honorable person in this society if you have good discipline in your speech and behavior. That is also one of the merits that Buddhism has recommended. The other thing, meditation, bhavana. Bhavana means we cultivate our mind again and again with good emotions, such as loving kindness, compassion, contemplation of Buddha's qualities. Again and again we think those thoughts, then negative feelings, negative emotions go away. You know, if they can fool with uh, good energy, good feelings in our mind, then it means, you know, we are happy. 
these are the things that Buddha said. These are the things which decorate our mind. If our mind is pure and calm, it means we are happy. Buddha said, try to develop your mind with meritorious deeds, generosity, moral conduct and meditation. That is the primary level. In the primary level, you know, we can take care of our parents, we can help other parents, we can help our brothers and sisters at home, in the primary level. Little by little, we can help others. You know, Buddha said, in this world, nobody is in this world whom, who are not our previous close relatives and friends. Our journey is very long. In our sansari journey, so long, we were born again and again. In this sansari journey, everybody is our close friends, at least one life in our previous lives. That is why we should be generous. We should help others. That is why we should practice compassion, loving kindness to others. As much as we are knowledgeable about this world reality, we have no angry with others. It means our mind is very pure and calm. On the other hand, the interest, the special thing, you know, there are a lot of religions in the world who have explained to do good deeds. Not only Buddhism, other religions also have explained to do good deeds. It is common. But there are a special thing in Buddhism. What is that? That is the, the explanation of impermanence. This is the very special thing. You know, whatever we see, whatever we hear, whatever we smell, that experience arises in this moment. It doesn't come to the present from the past. It doesn't go to the future from the present. It arises and ceases at the moment. When conditions are together, then experience arises. When conditions separate, the experience ceases. For example, when you listen in this sound, before you listen in to this sound, it was not here. After you listen in it, it ceased. When conditions are together, when this pen, my energy, this table, all of them are together, and also when my ear is active, then all things are together, I can listen in this sound. But after experience, it doesn't remain. When you see something, that is also like that. We have only memory. We have a memory. Memory is, you know, one of the qualities of the mind. We can remember anything in this life, not only this life. If we develop our mind, we can remember everything what happens when we were in our mother's womb. Not only mother's womb, Buddhism has explained. If we train, if we develop our mind, we can remember millions of previous lives. That is the quality of our mind, memory. Memory is one of the qualities of our mind. As much as we develop mindfulness, as the result of practicing mindfulness, we can recognize, we can remind our previous lives. That is the one of the qualities of mind. It doesn't sound that still they are happening. They are finished, they ceased. But we have only memory. But the fault which brings us suffering that as soon as we remember something, what happens to our mind? We go to the real situation. We have no ability to understand, now I read my mind. Our mind goes to the real situation, then we suffer or we get some feelings. According to Buddhism, if we can understand this reality again and again by practicing meditation, then this comprehension, this knowledge is going to be permanent. Then what is the highest 
level in our mental condition we live every moment with full mindfulness and as soon as we see something we hear something we smell something we eat something we know this experience arises this moment if we can live with mindfulness and see in this reality then we have no big attachment we have nothing to get angry it means we have overcome unsatisfactoriness or suffering this is the final purpose final destination when we practice this message on this path we have to do a lot of things you know if you want to go to another country you have to get a flight but flight doesn't come to here you have to go to the airport flight is ready in the airport first of all you have to reach airport when you go to airport you may have another vehicle car or van this purpose also like that the final goal is practicing mindfulness and wisdom but it is like the airport when you reach airport first of all we should have some kind of qualities in your life at the very beginning the gratitude we should be grateful that is the very primary level qualities first of all we should be um, grateful for our parents for our relatives for our uh, teachers that is very important in our life on this path on the other hand we should help others we should be generous when we practice those qualities it is like that we prepare something to go to airport when we practice these qualities gradually we reach that airport where we practice mindfulness and wisdom day by day we have to go forward with these qualities it means we are aware of our mind our success our proficiency depends on how far we are aware of our mind if we lost our mindfulness actually you know although we are knowledgeable although we have a lot of knowledge understanding our knowledge is useless therefore on the one hand knowledge is very important knowledge is very important on the other hand you know mindfulness hmm? without knowledge we have to nothing to practice although we have knowledge if we don't practice mindfulness and wisdom our knowledge is useless both of them are very important therefore buddha said very clearly keep in your mind in the present moment practice in some kind of meditation technique especially concentration meditation or tranquility meditation that is the main meditation technique that we should practice at the very beginning try to keep our mind for a long time with a particular subject particular object such as loving kindness or breathing breathing meditation is a very important meditation technique it is very useful to keep our mind in the present moment when we breathe in and out we live fully in the present moment our mind doesn't go to past or future it doesn't sound we forget our past or future buddhism never says forget to past or future yeah we have a good memory but as soon as we remember something we know very well now the incident is not there i read only my mind then we can remember anything without anger and without big attachment and day by day if we can purify our mind from desire anger and delusion these are the main roots which disturb our peace of mind day by day our success we can see we can refer our success how far we have overcome our desire or big attachment or craving 
On the other hand, how far we have overcome anger or ill will? On the other hand, how far we have overcome delusion? Delusion means, after experience, if we think, still it is happening, that is ignorance. When you remember your car or your motorcycle, at that moment you have a motorcycle. But when you don't remember it, when you don't think it, in your life it is not there. When you hear something, when you smell something, when you eat something, when you uh, keep something, at that moment we have only one experience at once. But, you know, our mind is very fast. We think all of experience are together, but be sure, once we have only one experience. Our mind, in a certain, it arises and ceases more than uh, millions of times it arises and ceases. It is so fast. Therefore, always we think all experience Whatever we look, we see, we remember, we smell, all things are together, we mostly think, but once we have only one experience. When we think something, that is our world. When you remember your college, then you are a student there. When you remember your mom, you are a son. When you think you are a brother, You are also a brother. When you think you are a car, you are the owner of the car. Then at once we have only one feeling, one experience. That is our life. That experience also not, that's also impermanent. We can get nothing as certain. That is the nature of our life. If we can understand this the reality of the life, day by day, we are on the path of liberation. We try to develop our meditation day by day. While we are doing our regular uh, activities, we know very well our real success, real happiness depends on how far we practice this message. While we are doing other duties, our studies, Little by little, we are clever to, we are intelligent to go forward in this uh, spiritual path. That should be our um, main goal in our life. Okay, if you have any question, you can ask. Uh, actually, there are a lot of things I have uh, written in this article. You can read them. And especially, I hope to explain here what is the importance of our mind and also how to develop it. According to Buddhism, the main purpose should be our life is practicing our mind, training our mind. One of them is go away from evils, negative emotions, such as desire, anger, ill will, jealousy. Those are the emotions, negative emotions which disturb our peace of mind. The very first level, go away from negative thoughts. The second step is, practice good. Try to practice good deeds in your life, such as generosity, virtue, and meditation. On the other hand, try to practice your mind to purify it. How do we purify our mind by practicing meditation, samatha and vipassana. Samatha means concentration meditation, keeping our mind in the present moment for a long time with a particular or some object. On the other hand, with concentrated mind, we try to train our mind with impermanence, arising and ceasing. Every moment, the experience arises and ceases. Buddha said, that is a very special advice that Buddha said. If you offer something to others, it will be beneficial for hundred lives. If you offer some food to others, it is beneficial. 
it helps you for your hundred lives. On the other hand, if you offer some food or other things like a very big hill, it is also more beneficial, you know. If you practice loving kindness at once, it is more beneficial than you donate a lot of things as a big hill. If you practice one moment in permanence, it is more beneficial than you practice loving kindness one year. How is beneficial that practicing in permanence? That is why, you know, first of all, we should have confidence what Buddha explained. But day by day, we go forward. When we experience, we should not have confidence further. Because we can get the experience through practicing, through our life. That is why, although, you know, sadha or devotion or confidence we should have in first level. About this message, we should have confidence at the very beginning, but day by day we go forward. Buddha said, we should not respect him. He explained very clearly, if you respect me, try to listen to this message and try to practice it through your life. That is the correct way how you respect me. You know, when we pray to the Buddha, we say that I go to the Buddha for refuge. It means we believe, we are confident of Buddha's enlightenment. It doesn't sound that Buddha can protect us. Buddha can protect us. He clearly explained that he is only a creature. He is only a guide. He can protect us. He can save us. He is only the person who explained this message. Dhamma means what Buddha said. I go to the Dhamma for refuge. It means we try to practice it in our life. And again we said, I go to the Sangha for refuge. Sangha means Buddha's noble disciples. It doesn't sound Buddha's noble disciples can protect us. They can save us. You know, it sounds that we try to follow them as an example, as good example, we try to follow Buddha's noble disciples. Those are the three refuge, Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, the triple gem, three refuge. They can protect us, but we try to follow them, that is the real refuge, protection. Okay? Um, this is the thing that I hope to explain you, especially the importance of practicing and developing our mind and purifying our mind is the most important thing which decides how far uh, we achieve real happiness. Okay, thank you for your coming. Today we are going to stop our Dharma session. Today we discuss only 40 minutes. Sometimes we discuss one hour and thirty minutes. Today, because of you, I <laughs> decided to short it, okay? Um, thank you for your coming. Uh, you know, end of some meritorious act, we mostly transfer these merits for our departed relatives. That is our tradition. We believe that if somebody are need in merits to achieve good life, when we transfer merits, they can receive better life. That is why when we do something with pure mind and good energy, then we transfer those merits to our departed relatives. Now the time to do it. Okay, now think about your departed relatives, like your grandparents or your other relatives. You can think of them and remember in them reminding them, now we are going to transfer these merits to our beloved departed relatives. Uh, if they need in some merits, may they receive these merits that we accumulated in this moment. May they receive good life. 
better life and finally may they also attain final bliss of liberation with that intention let's transfer these merits to our beloved departed relatives we say special stand sign pali idam me nyate nam ho to sukita hontu nyatayo idam me nyate nam ho to sukita hontu nyatayo idam me nyate nam ho to sukita hontu nyatayo by the power of all these positive energies may guardian deities and angels also receive this merits by receiving this merits they may keep their eye on you too may they protect you may they also attain final bliss of liberation with that intention let's transfer this merits to guardian deities and angels too etthavatayam he he sambhadam punya sampadam sambe deva anumodanto sabba sampatti siddhiya etthavatayam he he sambhadam punya sampadam sambe deva anumodanto sabba sampatti siddhiya etthavatayam he he sambhadam punya sampadam sambe deva anumodanto sabba sampatti sindhiya by the power of all these merits that we accumulated in this moment may you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no problems come to you may no difficulties come to you may you all righteous goals meet with success finally may all of us attain final bliss of liberation sadu 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 dukham panta cha nindukha bhayam panta cha nimbhaya sokham panta cha nissoka anto sambe pipani no may the triple gem bless you